Hello everybody, and um, welcome to, what was that? Did you see that? Was that a ghost? I don't know. Um, anyway, so welcome to um, our Conan Chronology uh, series here, and we are on chapter 3 of Robert E. Howard's Black Colossus, um, and where we are, we are in... Um, oh, I already forgot the name of the place. I want to say Korja, but that's not right. Anyway, it'll show up here. Um, so Conan and his army, um, Karaja, what's wrong with me? Um, they're marching out of the gates of the, um, the city or something down to where um, this big battle is going to take place because they know um, the army, the nomadic army from the south is coming. And um, so they're going through and Conan looks back at um, the princess Yasmela and he's like, oh, she seems a little too weak to do this, but she probably should get rid of her robes and like saying that she needs to arm her up a little bit. And, um, Almeric, the general or the guy right underneath Conan is like, um, laughing and he's like, yeah, um, the women don't fight like they do in Samaria, like your people do. Um, she's just coming to watch. And he's like, oh. Okay. And um, then he was saying, like, um, I think she wants to just get out of the city. She doesn't want to be left alone or whatever. And Conan's like, oh, be, does she is she worried about an uprising? Like, should we, like, hang some citizens <laughs> to, like, scare them straight? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, one of her servants came to me and said <clears throat> something about something coming to her in the night. And and Elmerick knows. He's like, yeah, this is, like, witchcraft and stuff. He's like, we're not facing, like, um, or this is sorcery. We're not facing, like, just an army. Like, this is going to be, like, crazy. And Conan's like, oh, okay, whatevs. And, um, it talks about a little bit about the, um, fancy pants knights. Um, I can't remember the dude's name, but, um, he, I think wants to marry the princess, um, and all this other jazz, but, um, he's just like a snooty perfumed jerk. And, um, so they get to where they're going to be camping and night has fallen and Yasmela has like kind of completely lost it at this point. And she runs to Conan and she's like, look, like I can't be alone. Stay with me. I'm freaking out. Every time I close my eyes, like, um, this like demon comes to me and, whispers secrets to me and he's going to take me to hell with him and all this other stuff. So she's just like completely lost it. So he like wraps her up in his cloak and lays her down by the fire that he's sitting at. And through the night she hears whispering like, like, bam, sh -sh -sh -sh. so she opens her eyes and it's not, uh, evil spirit it is just some dude whispering to conan and he's like look i was there i saw him and he was worshiping set and the wind came and blew back his hood and i saw his face and like i can't believe what i saw but i saw it and i know who not talk is and um conan's like huh and he's like, no, seriously, like, when I saw him, I went to um, that temple from the first chapter and went inside. The door was open. I went inside. There was a dead serpent. 
there was a dead Shabados, and there was treasure everywhere, but that was the only um, body in there. There were no bones, no nothing. And um, Conan's like, just thinking about it. And he's like, look, if you want to see what he looks like, look at this coin. And he pulled a coin out and showed Conan the face that was on the coin. And Conan doesn't say anything. But Yasmela sees it. And when she sees it for the first time in her life, she faints. And that's the end of chapter three. So, um, the next chapter is the big battle and it is very action packed. Um, the thing about this that I think is a bit strange, um, is the, the idea that we're not supposed to know who Nautok is, but, um, it seems very obvious, and next week I will tell you um, one of the more ridiculous clues that were left. So, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's weird because it's a mystery for Conan and Yasmela. But, not to us, but the problem is, Conan doesn't care. So there's this big mystery, and Conan could really care less whether he's fighting a man, a demon, a monster, because he's just... He was born to fight and born... And, like, I think it's in the next chapter. It talks about how, like, since all he's ever done was war, like, death being next to him has never bothered him. And when it's his time to die, it's his time to die, and that's that. So, <clears throat> all of the other people around who we don't know anything about, like this um, thief who came to Conan to warn him. Like, he's terrified. And there will be other people who are completely terrified. But Conan isn't. Um, so it's it's really weird when there's a lot of build-up over the identity of someone and our point-of-view character really doesn't give a crap. It, does any of this make sense to you? So, um, it's kind of a, a weird story, and I think this is why the stories of Conan leading troops and becoming king are, like, my least favorite. Um... Because even though there's great stuff in those stories, and there's great stuff in this story, it's just, <laughs> you have a ton of great, like a ton of great scenes, and Conan being horribly apathetic to like everything that's going on, but he's the hero of it. So, um, it, it's just, it's a strange, um, It's, it's just strange. I'm trying to come up with, like, an example of another um, group of stories or characters that have this same kind of thing. And I can't think of any off the top of my head. And yes, there are times when, like, Conan's scared. But he's scared for, like, not scared, he's, like, startled. Like, ugh. And then he just jumps into action kind of thing. But, um, it just, it, it cracks me up. So, anyway, this story is coming along nicely. 
and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, if you haven't read it, um, you could read the first two chapters and this chapter over at weirdmass.com, and um, I will see you next week.